this morning. I told you better get them combat boots on. Here it comes. It's funny how, uh, wow. I, mean, I had sort of a meeting this week. It wasn't a, a great meeting, okay? You ever get those sometimes? You don't want to have it, but you do it. And more of a community kind of thing. But I had to say it like it was. No game playing. That kind of meeting. You understand? I'd like to be nice. And I tried. But we had to make sure there's no self-righteousness. That's not going to fly. And so, anyway, I just happened to be studying and had studied for this message before that. I didn't plan on it. But boy, 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 did the Lord ever arm me with the ammo. Amen? Right from his word. For me, for me, but then for those in the meeting. Amen? So, let's go to the message today. Let's see what we can find. It's a big deal. Letters in red. Letters in red. We're looking at the words of Jesus. We know, well, I hope you know that all the Bible is the word of God. From Genesis to Revelation. Amen? From right in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right there, all the way through Revelation 22. Amen? But... I've always been, or at least for 20 years, I've been intrigued with the words of Jesus. I mean, if, if everything would have been written, the Bible says the libraries of the world couldn't contain it. But we have what we have. Those letters in red. Jesus on this earth, speaking, interacting, talking to his disciples, training crazy fishermen. How important must his words be? Amen? So that's what I've been doing. And uh, we're going to finish this series today. But I'll still be coming back to it from time to time, looking at more words of Jesus. Amen? But today we're going to close out this little series before we enter into messages on Easter and uh, Passion Season. What Jesus thinks about what? Say it with me. One more time. What Jesus thinks about what? Let's look at it. Amen? Y'all ready? Yes or no? This ain't one of those you're going to sleep on me. Got it? Yes or no? Okay? told a young man, 15 years old, as I son, you won't sleep on me. If you sleep on me, your parents know you're doing drugs, okay? You understand what I'm saying to you? You understand that? All right. You just think about that. Think about it as you start nodding a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. He's going to be forever scarred. We can never, ever go back to hear that man again. He's cursed me. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Look at that boy with the little crown on his head. Back it up. Look at that little fellow with that. Oh, look at him. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How pathetic. Amen. Come on. What Jesus thinks about self-righteousness. First of all, if you're going to learn about self-righteousness, we need to know what the word righteous means or righteousness. Righteous, the word, this is straight from Webster's Dictionary. You can get you one and look it up yourself. Here it is. It means virtuous blameless, justified, worthy. Amen? That's what the word righteous means. So, if we put self in front of righteous, it's self-virtue. Okay? Look at me. I put some virtue in myself. Self-blameless. Look, look, look. I make me blameless. How you doing with that? Self-justified, I justify myself. Y'all listening or not? Worthy, I am worthy because of who? Myself. How's that working for you this morning, yes or no? That's what it means. Being self-righteous is when I see myself and say this. I just did it, but I'm gonna do it again. I see myself and I say, self, you are virtuous. Emphasis on self. Self, you are blameless. Emphasis on self. Self, you are justified. Emphasis on self. Self, you are worthy. Emphasis on who? Self. I know me. Do you know you? The Bible says the heart's desperately wicked. Who can know it? But what I do know about me, I don't like enough to make me righteous. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you. There's not enough here for me to be a righteous person. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, Self-righteousness is me declaring myself what? I declare myself what? Come on, church, where y'all at? Help me. I declare myself what? You know the word justified in the Bible? 
The word justified in the Bible is God declaring us righteous. That's the word justified. We are made righteous through the blood of Christ. You understand that? Yes or no? Our righteousness, fill in the blank if you know it. Our righteousness is as blank. Filthy rags. Amen? So the best we can do when we make ourselves righteous, I tell you what, you can say it to the cows come home end of the day, you're still dirty. You're still filthy. Doesn't matter who you say, what you say, how you impress, whatever. Only God can declare us righteous. He is the ultimate judge. You hear me, yes or no? Only he can declare somebody not guilty. You're not the judge of the planet. I ain't the judge of the planet. But we act like we are sometimes. Yes or no? So I'm interested not so much in what Gary thinks on this subject, but on what God says, but what Jesus Christ himself says. Only God can declare me righteous. Okay? God sees my what? Come on. God sees my what? God is holy, I am not. Say that with me. God is I am, can we do it one more time? God is, I am, and you can sit here and argue with me and say, I'm be holy like he's holy. I know you're supposed to be holy like he is holy, but you ain't. Not on this planet. Now, we're declared righteous. The Bible even says we're seated in the heavenlies, amen? Our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but you still have something called flesh on your bones, and you still got a mind. You got some problems, and I got some problems, okay? Only God can declare ourselves righteous. Only he can do that, not us. So what does Jesus think about this subject, okay? It reminds me of a song. You know, there's a lot of songs like, oh, 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 you know. Oh, 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 oh. This is not hard to remember. Oh, 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 oh. Can you do that with me? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 there's four O's one more time. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all right, son? <laughs> first O, first O. This was an easy outline for me to come up with. This is easy. Self-righteousness. And isn't it something? Right out of the gate when Jesus is talking, he starts with the what? Oh, 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 oh. He starts with the offering. It's something how we think we can buy God. Or we can live like a fool, come to church on Sunday morning, pop something in a plate and think, oh yes, I'm giving to Jesus. We're crazy people. The offering, let's look at what Jesus said about the offering. This is Jesus' words. Jesus speaking. Therefore, if you bring your gift or offering to the altar and you remember that your brother has ought against you ought he has a reason against you because you've been you've, you've wronged him leave your gift or your offering before the altar go your way first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your what gift agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge deliver you to the officer and then you be cast into prison verily i say unto thee thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing what in the world is all this about jesus starts out with self-righteousness looking at the offering let's just some words that i've written say that with me money is what it's what we use it for. We use it to buy things. We have to have it. It's what we do. Money is power. It certainly impresses people. Money impresses people. And you can say, I ain't impressed with money. You are. We have to fight it. It impresses people. What people have. Their comp accomplishments. Their houses. Their boats. Their cars. Their bank account. Whatever. We are impressed by it. And Satan knows it. Okay? So surely God must be impressed too. You think he is, yes or no? Gold in heaven is asphalt. That's all it is in heaven. The streets are paved with it. It's asphalt. Don't you think of that? It's something you walk on in heaven. But we just give our life for it down here. Self-righteousness. We see green 
But God sees the heart. Say that with me. We see. But God sees the. One more time. We see. But God sees the. How are you on this subject? The offering. How are you doing? That's a toughie. This is Jesus. Righteousness and holiness cannot be bought, guys. Yes or no? It can't be bought. We say here at Fellowship Church, if you can't give cheerfully, then what? Wonder why I say that. Because I don't want us to be a bunch of self-righteous people here. You hear me? Yes or no? We got enough problems without creating that problem here. I appreciate your giving. But I'm not going to kowtow to you. You hear me? Yes or no? You're not going to be different to me because you give more than somebody else. Oh, he'll be impressed with me. I'm impressed with you because God made you in his image and in his likeness. I'm impressed with you because you matter and you have value. I'm impressed with you because, you know, you're a human being. Okay, you come to Fellowship Church, I'm glad you're here. But because you give X number of dollars or whatever, I, I'm going to fight being impressed with that. Are y'all hearing me? Yes or no? Is that ugly of me? Yes or no? You think that's ugly of me? It is what it is, okay? And guess who gets all the credit for anything that gets done here at Fellowship Church? Guess who gets all the credit? God gets all the credit. Can we thank him for that? Come on, you get all the credit! All the credit! Listen, you could be dead as a hammer. Then whose stuff is that stuff you got gonna be? Yes or no? You dead, Fred. Or whatever. Then what? Then whose stuff is that going to be? Think like that. Guys, fight this hard. Would you fight that? Yes or no? Would you, would you fight that in your spirit? I want to give because I love it. I want to give because God's blessed me. I want to give because I live in America. Where we're free. Where we can go out and have a job, man. How about that? Yes or no? Amen? Where I can work hard and I can bought something. I can buy a house. Or I can have a retirement. Wow! I want to give because God has blessed me. Is that a different attitude? Yes or no? You see how God's in all that? Amen? So, number one, the offering. Okay? So, it's a matter of the heart. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. It's not a Gary thing. When I'm able to give, it's a God thing. It's not a Gary thing. Look at what Gary did. Gary did. Gary can't do much. Gary's really good at going to hell. I'm really good at sinning. I'm very good at being selfish. My mama used to tell me, you greedy. Oh, I'm very good at that. And so when it comes to giving, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's definitely a God thing and not a Gary thing. Y'all hear me? Yes or no? Let's don't get hooked up on and hung up on this mess right here. This is crazy. Wonder how many churches have been screwed up totally because of offering and giving and money and, and crap like that I call it. Yes or no? Say. You know any? Yes or no? It just steals our joy here. It would steal our joy, wouldn't it? Can you imagine me riding up to this parking lot in this building every Sunday? And feeling like some man did it. I get out there and pray in that truck with the guys and I... I used to never pray with my eyes open. It's just the way it was. But occasionally now I'll sneak. When I'm out there praying in the truck, because I'm looking at the grounds, I'm looking at that building, I'm looking even at people coming sometimes as I'm praying out there. And wow, look what God did. Amen? So much better way to live your life. Look at what God did than look at what Gary did. Yes or no? Amen? Think about it. An offering is a gift to God, guys. That's what it is. It's a gift to God. An offering is often a great sacrifice. It's something, it's a sweet smell to the Lord when we give an offering. It smells good, unless you give it with a self-righteous heart. Then it stinks. Can you imagine giving something and just squirting stink fumes into God's nose? <laughs> but you're down here thinking, I smell so good. And God's going, man, <laughs> Wow, Woo! man, excuse me, amen, come on, I know I'm odd, <laughs> but did you get the drift, yes or no, you can't leave here saying, I didn't understand what he said, 
An offering should always be given to show our what? Believe it or not, that's why I want to do that office on the corner out there of Spinnaker and 776. I want it also to be a place where we, we're showing our gratitude to what the Lord has done. And people walk in that place and I can say, this is done debt free for the glory of God. Why? Why'd you do that, Pastor? Well, because you matter when they come in to see me. And often they'll ask me, I want to give you something. I need to pay for your counseling time. I said, no, you don't. This is what I do for a living. It's already been paid for. Amen? Things are taken care of here because we can love on you. Yes or no? Amen? The Bible says, up no man anything but to what? Love him. Amen? So, the offering is given an appreciation for what God has given us. Guys, keep that in, in mind. This is what Jesus is talking about. Above all, it's given to Jesus Christ in what? Love, 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 love. And I hate to say it. I mean, I, I guess the offering is a touchy subject. You hardly ever hear me talk about it. Correct? But it's funny. Even as I talk about it, there's like this calm and quiet over the audience. Like I've hit a nerve or something. I don't know why that is. Aren't you glad you have something to give? That's what the Bible says. Wouldn't you rather be somebody that could have something to give than somebody who's so poor you can't, you can't give two pennies? It's all perspective, guys, isn't it? Yes or no? I've been blessed. I can give. Or wait a minute. I could have nothing. <laughs> and I couldn't give anything. I'd choose that one. Only crazy person would choose that. Come on. Get your head straight on this. In conjunction with the offering, though, Jesus goes on and he mentions the offended brother. He mentions the offended brother when he's talking about the offering. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Why? First John says, how can we say we love God whom we haven't seen and yet we hate our brother? He says, if you bring your offering and you've got aught in your heart against your brother, you leave your offering and you go, get, you go make it right with your brother. He says that right in this passage. He uses that word aught. There it is. If you remember that your brother has ought against you, he has reason to have something against you because you've wronged him. But you ain't made it right. We've done evil or wrong against our brother. He mentions this when it comes to the offering. Jesus wasn't saying leave your offering if someone doesn't like you or thinks ill of you. You'd never get it if that's the case. Yes or no? Amen. Come on. It's not what he's talking about. Not saying you're going to be loved by everybody. But that's our goal is to love on people and to have a good relationship with people. But, but if you know you've wronged somebody, if you've sinned against somebody, probably more often than not is somebody in your family. Amen? Say. Or somebody you spend T-I-M-E with. Time. I don't know if you're like me. The more time I spend with somebody, the better chance I've got of saying something ugly. But we give that offering. We're going to try to, you know, give to the Lord. But wait a minute. He says, you know what? That money doesn't matter near as much as that person you've offended. I love people, God says. Remember, that's just stuff asphalt up here in heaven. You need it down there to get, make things happen. But people live forever. He's specific, okay? When we've sinned against somebody, we've, we've offended somebody, okay? What should I do when I've offended and sinned against a brother or a sister? What should I do? It's in this passage, so I want to hit it real quick. What should you do? Here, I'm bringing my offering to church. I'm feeling good about myself. But look, I'm giving an offering. But you shouldn't feel good because you've got an offended brother out there that you've hurt. You ought to deal with that. Why are we trying to come over here with God when we got this brother situation going on? Okay, I know not every situation is as easy as pie, but let's see what you can do about it to correct it. First of all, realize this has not only caused a rift between you and your brother, but also between you and who? God. That's number one. Number two, go to your brother and ask for what? Can we say it again? Oh, it's quiet in here. Let's ask for what? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And look at this one. Agree with him that you've offended him. Don't argue with him. I'm going to go and fix it and argue. <laughs> Sound like me. Don't go, and, don't go ask for forgiveness and argue with somebody. That's craziness. Let's get it right, guys. Third, how do I do this? Say it with me. Do this what? Don't let stuff mount up, guys. 
If you've got a situation, go deal with it. Why? Because it affects your offering. It affects your relationship with God. I need to deal with this right away. Jesus hooks this right with the offering and self-righteousness. Say that with me. Right away is always the what? How many found that to be true? Yes or no? God says, don't let the sun go down on your, on your what? On your wrath. Amen? Good rule of thumb as a couple, don't go to bed angry. Amen? Yes or no? Well, we'll just sleep on it. It's going to get worse. Deal with stuff. Fourth, remember, delaying is always going to make matters what? So Jesus hooks this offended brother kind of thing to the offering to point out our self-righteousness. We think we can have a right relationship with God because we're giving an offering. Yet we've got an offended brother who was made in the image of God. And that's not right. So somehow we think we can do this and be right. And God says you're full of yourself. You're not justified. It's not right. Yes or no? Amen? Are we cool on it? Yes or no? I told you this wasn't going to be pleasant this morning. Let's go on. Oh, 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 oh. Now here's another one. Self-righteousness. Uh-oh. The other woman. This is rough. I'm glad this is Jesus. You've heard that it was said by them of old time. He's talking about the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And he's certainly talking about the Ten Commandments here. Number seven, thou shalt not do what? Commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to 